Hello, my YouTube friends. I get a lot of questions about how I create these tutorials. So today, I'm gonna do like the most meta thing ever. I'm gonna do a tutorial on how to create tutorials. So let's get to it. My analytics say that 80% of the folks that watch my content are not subscribed. Am I doing something wrong? Let me know in the comments. But if you are looking for tools, tips, and tricks that can help make you a better YouTuber or live streamer, subscribe to the channel and click that bell so you don't miss any new content. It's totally free. The first thing you should know is to use this method, you're probably gonna wanna have a second monitor. Now it's not impossible with one monitor, but it's a lot more difficult. And if this is something you wanna do long-term, then you probably just wanna take the plunge and get a second monitor. It'll save you a whole bunch of hassle. You'll be really happy you did. And just because you have a laptop doesn't mean you can't do this. You can add a second monitor to most laptops. And I've even seen apps where you can add an iPad as a second monitor. So you should check those out. The first thing we're gonna do is set up our recording settings in OBS and create our recording scenes. Second, we're gonna create the recording capturing any video and audio that we need. Third, I'm gonna show you how to edit your tutorial using free software. So let's do this. The first thing we'll do is go into settings over here on the bottom right and I'm gonna go to output and I'm gonna drop this down and select advanced starting here in streaming we're gonna drop the encoder down if you have an Nvidia graphics card you should select that otherwise you can select x264 it works just fine if you have a reasonably decent machine then we're gonna click on recording and we're gonna go into our recording path. We're going to select browse and we're going to go to the location where we want our files to be saved. Next, we're going to select our recording format and there are a couple of differences. I like to use MP4 because it's the easiest one for me to put in my editing software, but really most editing softwares are gonna take any of these recording formats. And the downside to using MP4 and to using MOV is that if something happens and OBS locks up, that file is useless. So if you select MKV or FLV, that will be saved and usable even if something fails in OBS. Now you can go in here and you can select your specific encoder that you wanna use for your recording. You can rescale the output. I don't recommend doing that. Next, we're gonna go down here to our rate control. CBR is constant bit rate. VBR is the other one that I use on occasion. You can also use lossless. The difference here is lossless is gonna create some massive files. A constant bit rate is going to keep your bit rates all at the same rate. Whereas a variable bit rate will create a smaller file, but it might also be lower quality. I set my bit rate at 50,000. If I'm using a variable bit rate, I will set my bit rate at 50,000 and my max at 60,000. Needless to say, this is a lot different than live streaming. We're making high quality recordings. Then under preset, I use max quality. Now you may not be able to use max quality depending upon what your machine is capable of. Even going down to performance or max performance will still give you a pretty quality video. If you're getting poor recordings on max quality, go ahead and test these and lower this rating and see if you get a better quality recording. There really is no substitute for a good machine, but even in performance, this does a pretty nice job of creating video that you can use. Obviously, the lower you go on this scale, the lower the quality. In profile, I always set it to high but I don't think it really has all that much effect. Look ahead and psycho visual tuning are two things that you can add if you're using an Nvidia graphics card, but these are really only recommended if there is a lot of activity going on in the screen, like say you're recording a video game or something like that. Otherwise, you can have them unchecked. You want your base canvas resolution and your output scaled resolution set to exactly the same. In most cases, it's gonna be 1920 by 1080. That's probably what you're gonna be recording in and also 30 frames per second. Next, I wanna to go to the audio page and I'm just going to go down here to the monitoring device just in case we wanna actually listen to anything that we're recording. You set that up in here. Now I use the Nvidia High Definition Audio, which is one of my actual monitors. I can plug my headphones into that and hear through that monitor, so that's what I use. But you're probably going to have headphones or you can use the speakers. But speakers is not your best option because anything that plays through your speakers is also going to feed back into your microphone when you're recording and obviously that becomes a problem. Now I'm gonna click the plus and we're gonna add some stuff in here that we wanna record. Now there are two ways to record the screen. We're gonna start with display capture and click okay. Now we're gonna select the display that we want on our main screen. And there we go. 
So now anything on that display we can record. So I'll open DaVinci, I'll move it up here, and now we can see our DaVinci Resolve on that screen. Let's go ahead and create a new DaVinci Resolve file so we can see this in full screen. And there we go. So that's display capture. So let's remove this and go ahead and we'll put a window capture in here so you can see the difference. I click OK. I'm gonna drop this down and select the window I wanna be recording. In this case, DaVinci Resolve. You may use this for pretty much anything. You could use this for PowerPoint, recording a website, a video game, whatever you want. You can select that in Window Capture. Now you can see it's not the right size, so what I'm gonna do, click the Shift key and drag this little dot here all the way down to the bottom so we stretch that and it fills the screen. And there we go. That's what Window Capture looks like. Now I'm gonna remove that and go ahead and put in Display Capture again. That's what I use. I think you get the best quality picture with that. We'll select the correct display and there we go. Next, I want to show you how to add audio devices. So let's say we wanted to put our camera in here. I just add a video capture device and click OK. I could drop this down and select Cam Link, which is my video device. And I'm going to set it up to custom and 1920 by 1080. And then I'm going to use a custom audio device and I'm going to select my Cam Link audio as well. So now we are directly adding audio into our scene and this would be recorded as well. You can see down here in Audio Mixer, we're getting audio. We can shrink this down, place it wherever we want on our screen. So if our tutorial is going to have our face in it, it makes it really easy to do. And we'll test the audio. Works great. Now we could start recording and it's going to record our voice and all of our movements and clicks on our DaVinci Resolve. Let's go ahead and remove that camera. What if we just wanted to add audio, a microphone in here, so we didn't have our face on there? We'll click the plus and go to audio input capture. And we can just drop this down and select our microphone, in this case, cam link. Click OK, and there we go. So now we have our cam link in there. You can see that the audio is moving. Let's remove that. And for instance, maybe we want to capture some desktop audio, any sounds that your computer is playing. We'll go to Audio Output Capture, and we're going to click OK. We're going to drop that down, and we're going to select where our audio is being monitored from. So if your computer audio is coming out of your speakers or wherever, that's what you want to select here, and you click OK. Now, if you have a Mac, the process is going to be a little bit more complicated. There's a link in the top corner of this video that will take you to a video that shows you how to configure up your Mac to capture your desktop audio. Maybe click that at the end of the video because there's stuff here that you don't want to miss. So let's play something from our desktop. We'll load up a video here from YouTube. We'll put it up here on our other monitor. And when we click play, you can see our audio output capture is grabbing all of the audio from that video and playing it. So if we were recording, it's going to record all of that audio. You can have multiple audio devices as well. You could put your microphone and audio output capture so you can watch a video on your screen and be recording the audio from that. And of course, all you have to do to start recording is click start recording. It will record those files in the directory that we set up earlier. When you're finished, you just click stop recording and you're all set. Now for my tutorials, I only record screen stuff with OBS. The main talking head stuff like this, I record directly on the camera. This gives you the best possible quality. I also do two different types of recording in OBS. One is just a screen capture with no audio. These I'll voice over later recording directly to the camera for the best quality. For the second one, I record voice and any other audio I need directly in OBS. So let me show you how each of these is done. Here is an example where I would record audio and video together. So I can be working up here in DaVinci Resolve. And of course, I'm also recording myself on screen right here. All I have to do to record this is go down here and click start recording. And of course, when I'm finished, I just click stop recording. It's that simple. So if I was just recording a screen capture, all I need to do is go ahead and hit record and do the things on the screen that I want to show. And this is really simple. Once you have the screen recording done, well, then you can do the voiceover. And I do the voiceover using this camera right here. And I play the video on this screen right here. And basically, it's pretty simple. I just play the video, talk about what I'm actually doing on the screen. But if I need to say something three or four times, I will definitely scroll back in the video and move it forward just to get it right. And that can make it a little more difficult to edit the audio but nobody said this was gonna be easy. 
We just said you're gonna make a great tutorial. Now, let me show you how to edit each type of recording. For this, I'm gonna use DaVinci Resolve. It's totally free and there's a link in the description. So definitely download it and follow along. Here we are in DaVinci Resolve. There is a link in the description. It's totally free. I'm going to drag some files into our media pool and these files are gonna represent the different types of stuff that you will be doing for your edit. So I have a screen capture, I have a video that's just my talking head stuff, and then I have a third one that's captured through OBS with voice already built in. So the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna drag one onto our timeline here, and this is just a talking head video, comes directly out of my camera, and all you have to do to edit this is really just kind of clip it out. You're gonna go through, you're gonna listen to it, and you're gonna take the razor blades here and you're just gonna add a cut and you'll add another cut and you're gonna right click on it and go to ripple cut. You can also use control shift X for your ripple cuts and you're just gonna sequence this up so it all runs together. You can select the arrow, drag the end up and there you go, that's how you edit camera footage. The next thing is footage that we created with audio in OBS. When I drag this in here, you can see it looks just like our camera footage and you go in here and you clip it out and you go ahead and you ripple cut and it just removes those gaps and spaces. Super easy, you just wanna make sure you play it and listen to it. Make sure your cuts aren't too jarring and you're all set. The last piece here is how you do a screen capture, which is what we have right here. You can see we captured that in OBS, but it has no audio at all. So in order to do audio, we're gonna add a voiceover. So I'm gonna drag this up so it splits and we're gonna put our voiceover in the middle and we're gonna just drag this down here and there we go. So now all you really need to do, and I'm gonna turn off this video right here so it doesn't show up at all. And I'm gonna turn off this audio down here. Even though there isn't any, it's always just good practice to turn off audio that you're not using. You can actually separate these clips out and delete them if you want, but I'm just muting the stuff here. Then you go in and you go ahead and you do the same thing. You ripple cut in order to bring these audio clips together and have them line up with what is actually going on in the video. If you did multiple takes, you cut out all the takes you don't want. You can also edit this up here so that you can speed up sections, slow down sections, or even add a frame hold. So you can see that I split my screen capture. When I right click on here, I can select retime controls. And then down here at the bottom, you can see that I can change the speed. I can also add a freeze frame or reverse a segment if I want to. So what I'll do is I'll move my playhead all the way to the end and go ahead and select that last frame. And then I'm gonna click this down arrow again and I'm gonna go to freeze frame. And that adds a frame at the end here that I can stretch so that if I talk a little longer about a segment, I can have a freeze frame in there or I can slow down the clip to line it up with my voice audio. And that's pretty much how you're going to edit any screen captures that you do if you're going to do voiceover later. It's really simple stuff. So so we have our clips and they're bumped together and they kind of seem jerky and everything else. Maybe we want some transitions in here. So I'm gonna go up here to the effects library and select video transitions. There's a whole bunch of different types of transitions and titles and text and everything else that you can do right from the effects library right here. So all we have to do is select a transition, drag it into the clip. And then when we play through it, and it doesn't really show when you drag through it, you have to play through it. And you can see right there we get a cross dissolve. So it dissolves from one scene to another. And you can stretch these out or you can thin them up. You can also go up here into the transition window and select different types of transitions. You can change the angles and the borders and the colors. And let's go ahead and check it out with this transition, the edge wipe, and there we go. Wipes up from the bottom. And this is a way that it's really simple for you to spice up these edits so you don't have so many jump cuts and everything else. And it's super easy to set it up. And if you look, there are just all kinds of video transitions that are built right in. And that's pretty much the editing segment. You can edit up your tutorial, simple, easy, and fun. Once we finish editing, all that's left is for us to export this so we can upload it. Down in the bottom right hand side, you can see this little rocket ship. We're going to select that, then we're going to name our file. You can browse to the location where you want this to be saved at. Select your format. Um, I use QuickTime here, but you can use something else if you like. And H.264 is the codec. And this is really the settings you want to use for uploads to YouTube. You can set your resolution if you want it higher than 1920 by 1080 and you can also 
also select your frame rate, although usually this is selected by the type of footage that you're using. And once you're finished, you just add it to the render queue. You go over here to the right and you click render and it's going to render to that location that you selected right there and you're ready to upload to YouTube. Now, if you wanna see how to use voice changers in OBS, totally free, check this video out. And if you're always looking for tools, tips, and tricks that can help make you a better YouTuber or live streamer, subscribe to the channel. It's totally free as well. My name is Michael Fire Jr. Thank you so much for watching. Have a great day, and I'll see you in the next one.